Presentation of Main Street Media, your source for news, sports, and information on Main Street in Middle Tennessee. to mornings on main street on this friday december the 10th 2021 we got a fun show for you coming this morning and it, we're at the uh, palatial studios in greater lebanon tennessee of the united states of america and it is pouring down rain a big rainstorm just came through here and we're going to talk about what's happening overnight in case you didn't know there's some really really possibly bad weather that's coming through uh, a friend of mine that works for the weather channel said it could get dicey in the morning we're going to show you the map here in just a moment so we get you guys ready on the show today really excited we get some really great things for you at 7 30 mtsu head football coach rick stockstill will join us uh I, I love this man i love this coach i love what he does i love what he's done for the university he's going to join us at 7 30 mtsu plays in the bahamas bowl a week from tomorrow it's the first bowl game of the entire bowl season so uh our good friend rick stocks will join us at 7 30 this morning as they get ready to go to the bahamas and play in the bowl game where they take on toledo and at 7 20 our another good friend of the show justin beasley from mount juliet will tell us about the big weekend they've got planned uh just down the road and a lot of road closings things that are going on we'll get you ca caught up on that and at 710, here in about eight minutes, we're going to take you over to Nashville State. Cindy Waller, she's a dean of nursing in Nashville State. Today, they graduate a huge nursing class to get onto the workforce, you know, the critical need for health care and for workers. And Nashville State does a fantastic job of putting nurses into, uh, into hospitals and wherever they need to go. So Cindy Waller will join us then. Uh, let's bring in the intern this morning, still in a location. I'm not sure where, but you've got better lights. Maybe you're at a Thornton's or a Mapco. Uh, yeah, I am at a Thornton's. Uh, they allowed me to decorate a little bit. Looks good back there. Thanks, man. I well don't done. A, don't have a bunch on the walls, but we're getting there. You're, you're getting there. So are you close to the where I am or where where, where are you? I mean, can you, are we going to play the game of hot and cold here? Right, yes. I am uh, far away, but I'm always close to you, Joe. Okay, well, that's really weird. But, hey, remember what happens when you talk to somebody, they drink coffee. What does that mean? It means that you don't care. They don't care. So, let me ask again. Hey, yeah. where are you right now? Oh, uh, I am. It's a long story and funny, too, if you were uh, down to listen to it. What's that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, let's get serious for a moment. The one few times on the show we do. Right. Let me share the screen now of what's happening. Uh, this is from the National Weather Service. And I can do, I'm getting so much better at this. My sure. mother would be so proud of what I can do now. National Weather Service. All right. Uh, is that up on the screen, intern? Yes, sir. 
So look at this, my friends. Severe weather threats tonight, Saturday morning. I'm going to read it to you. Uh, severe storms are expected Friday night with initial round possible from 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. Saturday. Then additional lines expected from 2 a.m. until 9 a.m. I'm going to pref- say this. When the tornadoes came through in March of 2020, they came through at like 1.30 in the morning. Uh, went right by my house. I live in Donaldson. That's a tornado that went through Nashville, destroyed DCA, into Mount Juliet, Mount Juliet Christian Academy, and then all its way to Cookville. So, man, I just, I'm not a fan of this. Uh, the early round is likely to affect the orange area. See to the left. We're in Nashville is in that orange area. And strong tornadoes are possible along with the threat of damaging straight line wind. They tell you, plan ahead. And the number two one is the most important one. Leave your phone on Friday night so you can receive warnings. Have a plan in place. Know where to go in the event you go under a warning. Storms will be moving fast. You may have little time to reach shelter. And to the right on their Twitter account, you can see it says widespread storms will develop along and ahead of a strong cold front that will sweep across Middle Tennessee tonight and early Saturday. Now, around noon Saturday, it's expected to be gone, but some areas you see to the left, I see the thing from the Weather Channel. That could be a four and a five, you know, and I, I can't remember the last time I saw the tornado condition warning at a five. And I'm not trying to scare you. Trust me. I worked in news for many, many, many years, and a lot of times, thankfully, nothing happens. But the few times that it does happen, it's it's devastating. So please be careful and uh, take heed for that, what's happening tonight. So intern, you got that? Yes, sir. I don't want anything to happen to you and wherever you are, what location you are in. Right. No, I'm in a, remember I'm in the basement, so. Well, where are you again? Watch this. Where are you again? <laughs> uh, basement. Mm. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. Then there too. All right. We got to get to a little news for you today, this morning from the E edition of the main street, Nashville, which just came out about an hour ago. You see, look up to date. There you go. February, Friday, December 10th, 2021. I don't know what I'm saying February for. Uh, I clicked on it, and I'm heartbroken for a story that's happening in the paper today up here in Lebanon, which is just crushing me because I love this place so much. And I just found out. Popular Lebanon bakery will close permanently on Christmas Eve. Man, Xavier Smith wrote this story, and I wish he didn't have to. Long, uh, The owners of Jay Claiborne's bakery announced the decision to close the bakery and cafe on December 24th. I This, this place is what makes small town America perfect. And I am just crushed that they are closed. You can read the article this morning uh, in Main Street, Nashville. Uh, and they're in the owners. It's such a great place to eat. And I'm so sad that we're losing this spot. You know, we lost another cool restaurant up here in Lebanon not too long ago. And now we're losing this one. So uh, thank you for all you've done for many years. Thanks, guys, for what you've done. And I hate that you're doing this. So hopefully we can, you know, before they go out on December 24th, can go over and get some eat and say hi to them and everything. They're still accepting orders for holiday cakes and pies. There's a number there. You can read it in the uh, E-edition of Main Street Nashville today. So I just really hate that that's happening and going on. Uh, as again, you know, I love reading the Nashville Banner. 70 years ago today, the headlines that's going on, flood threat seems over. And there's a picture here in the banner of them building the Cheatham Lock in Ashland City, which was under construction, had been threatened by the rising waters of the Cumberland River. There's a picture right there. I've seen that thing a million times. It's just really cool to see uh, a picture of it being built right there. So, again, that's in the uh, Nashville Manor. To get to this morning, the history part of this. Uh, I know we, uh, we've we talked about the severe weather, and that took us to the side for a second, but we'll get back on track here. Look at this, my friends. Don't look now. The Nashville Predators rolling. Yeah, Ely Tolvin and scored with 11 seconds left last night. The Nashville Predators beat Barry Trotz, New York Islanders, 3-2. to two. Well done, boys. They're back on the ice, I think, Saturday night as we scroll through here. A lot of prep stuff that's happening today. You can see all that as well. Let me go back and see where the Nashville Predators are back on the ice again. Here we go. <clears throat> they are the – oh, tonight, Nashville at New Jersey, 6.30. Nashville at New Jersey tonight. See what Nashville, the Predators, in case you didn't know, I'm a big Predator fan. Uh, they're in the ring. They're in third place right there. When a lot of people didn't think they'd be right there. And there they are in third place through 26 games of the season. That's about a third of the season has taken place. All right. Uh, intern, you ready? <clears throat> yes, I am. This is the, this has become as popular as celebrity birthdays. <laughs> and we were talking about, oh, my good friend, real quick, Michelle Harbin, Harbin Hollow grocery store up in Portland. Fantastic story. I did a little TV thing with her in my previous life. Nice article there by Tom Atkinson on 
the owner of Harbin Hollow Grocery Store, and it's a great little place. I, that's this is a place we can't lose as well. A great little store up there that helps so many people out. So a nice article on her. All right, so we do every day. We do the comic strip. Intern, have you ever seen a more handsome man than that right there? Oh, <laughs> uh huh. They let you in the paper. They did. I got a nice article about how you can change your life with three little words. You can read that. I'm not going to tell you what it is because I want you to read it and see for yourself how it can change your life, change my life, and change other people's lives as well. All right, the cartoon that we are reading today is from. Uh, where did it go? Now I can't find it. Hold on. Please stay with us, everybody. This is a work in progress. Uh, there it is. Okay. It's a comic strip called Zits. I'd never heard of this, but here we are. So here we are. This is our comic <laughs> strip tease for today, playing the role of the young urban professional. That is the intern playing the role of the, the grumpy old roommate is yours truly. All right, intern, are you ready for this? Oh yeah. Okay, uh, three, two, and sing. Oh, there's one piece of pie left. That's mine. Rock, paper, scissors? No, let's settle this like men. Wait, what? Biggest waistline wins. <laughs> <laughs> so I terrible. Love. Again, again, I I pray our boss isn't watching this because <laughs> we're going to get a phone call in a minute. Uh, mm -hmm. Zits. I'm not sure what that's. I don't, I don't know the backstory of these two dudes, and I really don't want to know. But look how big that pie is. Right. It's bigger than his head. Yeah, I would have, while you were doing that, I would have took off. With I don't pie. get it. And then the, the guy at the far end pulling his belly up, that's just weird. <laughs> now I don't want to eat any kind of pie. All right, that's it for today. Thank you there, intern. Well done. All right, let's take a quick break. We come back. We'll talk to Cindy Waller at Nashville State the director of nursing with a big day they got over there. And what a great nursing program they have. So Cindy will join us just a little bit. And of course, at 730 MTSU football coach Rick Stockstill will join us as the Blue Raiders get ready to take uh, on Toledo in the Music City Bowl. All right, you're watching Mornings on Main Street back after this. I look at it as building relationships. I've got, uh, my phone has got the phone number of every head football coach, every basketball coach, every baseball coach, every softball coach, every athletic director in Wilson County in it. If something ever happens to me, that phone's gonna be uh, a pretty good commodity for somebody. And I've known these people. I grew up in Wilson County, I went to Lebanon High School, I went to Cumberland when it was a junior college. I, I, I am now covering uh, even some grandchildren of guys I went to school with. I, I think I think journalism is like politics; it's all local, and uh, and I think Main Street Media has really really hit on something that I've been preaching for 50 years and keep keep the news local, right? Right, Local stories for local readers. And that's what I like about Main Street Media. I finally found somebody who agrees with me <laughs> philosophically about concentrate on, on local subjects, local topics, and uh, you, you'll, you, you'll, you'll bring your readers. Delta Dental is involved in a lot of athletics, a lot of community events. Why is it important for Delta Dental? Well, we're a statewide organization. You know, we, we want to say that we, we will serve clients from, you know, that OUT saying from Mountain City to Memphis. Yes. We're in between. So that's, that's our approach. And uh, we feel that we have a um, obligation to give back to the people of the state of Tennessee. We uh, have a special place in the in the u.s tax codes and that allows us or requires us to give back 
dramatically amount. And so we'll give back roughly 35% of what we net every year. Wow. Say that again. 35% of what we net. It could be closer to 40 this year, but uh, that'll be what we'll give. So two, we give two giving things. We, we have one thing called corporate citizenship. That's where we run programs with statewide organizations, local organizations, that sort of thing. And then we have a foundation. And the foundation actually is one of the single largest supporters of working poor clinics in the state. So you guys truly put the money where your mouth is or vice very, versa. Very good uh, uh, analogy. Right? And you can take that if you want. Yes. That's free of charge. <laughs> All right, thank you, Dr. Wing from Delta Dental. Now offering vision and dental plans. Go to deltadentaltn.com. We love, love Delta Dental. That's something to smile about. Here's also something to smile about. Let's bring in Cindy Waller. She's the Dean of Nursing for Nashville State. How are you, ma'am? It's good to see you again. Thank you. Good to see you as well. A big day for you guys. If they're graduating a great nursing class, I know something this is very, of course, you're the director of nursing, but this is such a critical time and a great day for these young men and women to get out into the workforce because the need for nurses and healthcare workers is always going to be there. Yes, that would be correct. And so several years ago, we realized that Nashville State had an opportunity to increase enrollment um, because of the need within our healthcare facilities. We work very closely with Ascension, HCA, TriStar, and Vanderbilt. And they had a need for obviously more nurses and we had an opportunity to expand our enrollment. And so back in um, January of 2020, we increased our enrollment to accommodate the need. Of course, little did we know that within about three months of admitting a new group of students, COVID would hit. So which changed dramatically um, the way that we were delivering our education. But we have students that are graduating today and they are the first cohort to have um, started in um, in January. And I love it. We got the ranking on the screen. You guys are so well respected in what you do. And I love the fact that you guys got this nice accolade of being one of the top nursing programs in the Southeast. And there's always been this critical need, Cindy, for things that are going on. But in the last year and a half, and I know you come from have a healthcare background uh, and the importance of this that a lot of people are now discovering, but you've known this for years, how important these nurses and young men and women who are entering the workforce have been and will always be important to us. That would be correct. I have been, um, I have been actively involved in the nursing profession for 40 plus years and have seen the changes and weathered the changes in spite of all the changes that are going on uh, as a result. But at the end of the day, what happens at the bedside between a nurse and the patient remains unchanged. And what happens at the bedside between a nurse and the family remains unchanged and the care that they need. So, uh, and in spite of a pandemic, what happens um, remains unchanged. So what we have tried to do at Nashville State is just bring those values and what we believe the nursing profession is and um, just adapt to the needs of our community and adapt to um, the healthcare crises that we may see. And we just um, move forward. I love it. And I'll get a toot my daughter's horn. She graduated from nursing school back in May. And, and, you know, Cindy, when she started out, I think there were 54 kids in her class and the time she graduated, there were 24. So these young men and women who are graduating today, they've been through a lot. It's not easy. And I tip my hat to, all of them, this new generation that people want to put down, they're as strong as ever. And I was so proud. And you see it every day. We do. You know, I tell people all the time at, at, at Nashville State. So one of the things about Nashville State Community College is we have the most diverse student body in the state of Tennessee. That's one thing. And that's something that we're really proud of. And secondly, I say that our student body are individuals who sometimes this is their second chance or third chance. Um, we have uh, typically a lot, some older students who have raised their family and maybe they always wanted to be a nurse, but they never had the opportunity. And so we at Nashville State Belief, part of our mission is to um, give people that opportunity and help them achieve the dream that they had. We also recognize that we, do that. we not only change the life of the student, but we also have the opportunity in many ways to change the um, trajectory of that family. Oh, so, um, 
Yes. Yeah, and I do, you so, know, I can't but yes. I did a TV segment with you. Uh, I don't think you guys have recovered from that, have you? <laughs> that was actually a really fun segment. Of course, we were up at three o'clock in the morning to do that segment, but but you had an opportunity to interface with our students. That group of students that you interfaced with are all doing extremely well. And the right. great thing that we have also found at Nashville State and we're very proud of is a lot of our graduates have come back and they teach for us now as well. So nice. our graduates... Uh, come back and have become our clinical instructors or instructors in that lab that you attended as well. And that makes us, uh, we're proud. We're proud in that regard. And we're proud that they want to invest. You know, the one thing about nursing is we have to pay it forward all the time to the next generation. And so there are people in my life that paid it forward for me personally. And so we believe as well, and part of our mission is that we want our students to learn the fact that in the world of nursing, you need to pay it forward to the next generation. So, so they are now returning and they are now providing instruction to the next generation of nurses as well. Uh, that's fantastic. You know, in the morning I spent with you on TV, what I loved about it, the diversity. I mean, we saw young and old, male and female, black and white. I mean, everybody working together for the common cause. And I, I just, that's what I took away. We had a lot of fun that morning, but I just took away how great the students were that morning and know that they were going out into the workforce and make this world a better place. Thanks to you at Nashville State. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, done. well it's a good group. It's going to be a fun day. Congratulations on those that are graduating. And thank you for doing this. I know it's kind of last minute, but I wanted to make sure people know what great things you guys are doing at Nashville State. So thank you. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Cindy Waller, the Director of Nursing at Nashville State, and they're graduating a nice big class today. Uh, if you're looking to go back, like she talked about, a second career and do things, check out Nashville State. I mean, they are fantastic over there. All right, well, still to come on the show this morning. Uh, I'm so excited. 7.30, MTSU head football coach Rick Stock still will join us. We are decorating all things MTSU. We've got the helmet. we got the sweatshirt. The intern's got – he's repping MTSU as well. We all are today. He'll join us at 7.30. But next, Justin Beasley, the public information officer from Mount Juliet, will join us. Big weekend happening in Mount Juliet. We'll tell you all that's going on. That's next. You're watching Mornings on Main Street. Hey everybody, it's Hunter Briley with Regal Realty Group, proud sponsor of Pet of the Week, Big Joe Duman and Main Street Media. We've got a super exciting event that we're about to release on you. It's called the 2021 Santa Paws Adoptathon, and it's right here at Tremont Mansion here in Hermitage, Tennessee. We would love to invite you and any of your friends to come on out that day on December 18th from 12 noon to 4 p.m. We're gonna have a lot of food, snacks, some drinks, and a lot of great times, but most important, we're gonna have puppy dogs from at least eight local shelters from around Middle Tennessee. They're going to bring some dogs. We're going to try to find them permanent homes, ladies and gentlemen. What better way to start off your Christmas holidays than to take home a lovely new pet for your family? Come on out. Again, that's December 18th. It's a Saturday, 12 noon to 4 p.m. right here at Tremont Mansion. We would love to have you. It's free. Come on out. We'll feed you. We'll give you a couple drinks and you get to play with some puppies. Thanks so much, everybody. Welcome back. And on that day that Hunter was talking about, Mount Juliet Animal Care and Control will be represented at Santa, Santa Paul's Adopt-a-Thon that day. And uh, one guy to help me get help part of getting Met, Mount Juliet Animal Care and Control to come to that is the PIO of Mount Juliet, Mr. Justin Beasley. Uh, Justin, how are you, man? You are in a dark screen there. Hey, Justin. Is he froze? Justin, you're froze. It's a cute picture of you, though, but you've, you've frozen on us. Can you log off and log back in and see if you can get it there? Justin. Justin, did you get beamed up somewhere? Did you get raptured? Oh, no, he did. It's our first guest that's ever been raptured. Oh, Justin. He's going. <laughs> I could watch this circle go around and around and around all day long. Uh, anyway, Mount Juliet has their Christmas parade. <laughs> has their Christmas parade this weekend. Uh, let's go. Is he back again? Hey, man. 
Hey, Justin. Perhaps you shouldn't have called in on your cricket phone. <laughs> it's kind of par for the course in this business, is it not? <laughs> what what do you I like your jacket you got on there? That's nice. Is that from the Star Trek Federation? It is. And it's uh it was two hundred dollars. It was purchased not by myself, and it's a free jacket. <laughs> I'm sure you can get down with that. I know you didn't pay for that MTSU hoodie either, so uh, no, a good friend of mine gave it to me. Our best friend, Rick Stock, still gave it to me. He's going to yeah, be on the thanks, show in a little bit. Thanks for teasing me at 720 and instead of teasing him at 730. But, hey, I get it. Hey, I put the tweet out that Rick Stock still is joining us last night, this morning, yesterday. So just consider yourself lucky. It's like on the Johnny Carson show when Jimmy Stewart would come on. Coach Stock still is Jimmy Stewart. Then they have, like, Don Rickles would come on. You're Don Rickles. You're just You're the second part of the show, so don't worry. Frozen again. Uh, do you not have any better internet service? Can you not get to work on time to do this? <laughs> what are you posing for Mount Rushmore? <laughs> Here comes the circle again. He got half raptured again. And there he goes. Justin, we want to know about the Christmas parade to Mount Juliet. We had Pastor Workman on from Shallow Baptist Church the other day who told us about some of the ins and outs that's happening, but we didn't want to get the other part with you and so, <laughs> there you go. look, folks, live things that are happening, and we consider this live streaming TV can go on. And uh, I'm just fascinated by the little circle that's going around. There he is. Hey, I'm, on, I'm calling in on two phones now. Why? Because your internet, my, I guess my internet's bad. It is. All right. So tell us what's going on Saturday, man. This segment is worse than some of the ones you used to do at Channel 4. <laughs> uh, so Saturday, we had the Christmas parade at 11 a.m. sharp. We're going to start judging um, the floats around 10. We have 85 floats. Joe, I wish we could have you as a, a bigger representation at the city of Mount Juliet. But, man, I tell you, this city's got some star power. So have fun in Gallatin and Hermitage. Maybe we can make some room for you in future years. We got a Christmas tree lighting with Shiloh Baptist at 430. That'll be downtown near the clock tower. That's going to be an awesome event right across from the incredible Christmas place. So people can go shop and drop and get all their Christmas stuff. And then after that, at 430, we'll actually light the tree. We'll announce our Christmas decorating winners. We've had more than 100 households enter our kind of annual holiday lighting contest. And man, I think one house... From what I've heard, I haven't seen it. Has like Santa on the top of the house with a full slate of reindeers. Now I have to go check that out, but obviously it's professionally done. But that is worth going to see. Am I right? Uh, it is. Listen, man, you didn't work this hard at Channel Four, and I'm proud of you now. Hey, man, I I get it how I can get it. You know what I mean? So <laughs> sometimes just to peel behind the curtain sometimes i didn't get my story until noon so i mean i could only work so hard you know what i mean i mean you're up, you're up at seven i gotta get like you my man well that's good i'm I'm up for the chickens hey listen so 85 floats you said in this parade yeah and we had a safety meeting last night we're having another one tonight uh just to stay on the up and up at mount juliet as far as how to keep everyone safe keep the kids on the floats make sure they're throwing the candy out far enough understand good. how early the kids have to get there 85 floats. I mean, a lot of them are going to be businesses, but hey, one of them is going to be the three high schools here in Mount Juliet. They're going to combine one band and be called one happy band. I mean, they, they deserve a Nobel Peace Prize. I don't hear about anybody <laughs> like that joining forces. So um, good for the kids learning how to work together. We should uh, we should learn that in this country. We need to, we need to all work together a little bit more. All right, so people are asking weather-wise. Uh, it should be cleared out by noon, but by chance the weather sticks around. Does the parade still go on? Chance it sticks around. I, I called Dan Thomas the other day, my man at Channel 4. We're going to clear it out by 3, but uh, sincerely, I think it's out by 3, and we don't think like that. The rain's going to be out of the way by 11. We're just going to continue to pray for the people in the city of Mount Juliet and really all around Middle Tennessee that hopefully uh, these storms come to pass Friday night. But uh, – weather forecast as the week has gone on and we're, we're not expecting anything major once the parade starts at 11 hopefully that remains the same 
Good. All right. So real quick, I know uh, we, we got move ahead in a minute. Where does the parade start? That's not a tough question. What'd you ask? I didn't even hear it. Where does the parade start? The parade starts on Lebanon Road at Mount Juliet League Park, home to many great ball players. Then it's going to come down North Mount Juliet Road, uh, right in front of City Hall. And then you're going to take a left on East Division Street, and that's where the floats will end. I think we're going like two miles an hour for about a two and a half mile stretch. So the parade's going to last probably from 11 to 12:30. We actually had to move it up uh, to 11 instead of one because there's a train coming through a little bit later. Uh, heading into Nashville, and uh, I mean that just that just spells disaster. So we made the heady decision to move it up to. A... I've never been to one. It's going to be my first one, but I, I think the whole town comes out for this. And of course, Big Joe, you're welcome too as well. I, I so appreciate that. All right, all right. So Justin, here's the deal. Because I like you, and because I know what you think about our next guest, don't go anywhere, but mute your microphone. Or call back in because we have a we have a picture of you right now and it's a frozen picture and it's not really flattering of you. So log it back might, in. All right. Still frame might be good, but okay, I'll I'll, I'll get better. Okay, thanks for information. And uh, this was quite possibly the worst segment of mornings on Main Street since we started two months ago. But thank you for that. <laughs> You got it, my man. All right, see you in a little bit. All right, thanks, Justin Beasley. He'll rejoin us in a moment. But up next. So excited. Looking forward to this. Head football coach of Middle Tennessee State University, Rick Stockstill, will join us. That's next. You're watching Mornings on Main Street. Dental coverage may be a small investment, but it has big benefits. Because dental coverage and preventive oral care leads to more than a healthier smile. It leads to a healthier life overall. Delta Dental makes it easy to get the care you need. With the nation's largest network, you're more likely to find or keep a dentist you love. And with comprehensive coverage and additional discounts, you'll have benefits you love too. Make a lasting investment in your oral and overall health with coverage from Delta Dental. Visit deltadentaltn.com to learn more. Hey, Toby. Toby knows comfort, whether day or night. Through the highs, and the lows, Toby knows. You've put it off long enough. That old system is just out with the old, in with the new. We'll make it worthwhile all the way through. Dairyberry is your local independent train dealer. It's hard to stop a train. Visit dairyberryac.com today and schedule a visit. Dairyberry Heat and Air, making customers for life. All right, welcome back to Mornings on Main Street. So many, let me get the band playing there. Got it. All right, there we go now. Let's waste no time. Let's bring in the head football coach, MTSU, Rick Stock. So, Coach, good morning to you. Good morning, Joe. How are you, my man? I am so over the moon excited that you're joining us today. I really appreciate you doing that. I know how busy you are, so thank you for doing this. I'm honored to be on here, Joe. I'm not that busy. I can't be on here with you. <laughs> when do we leave for the Bahamas? Monday. Uh, uh, next, well, this coming Monday, uh, early. Got to get everybody because we've got such a big party with all our players, managers, trainers, um, administration, you know, some booster people and everything. So we probably have a, over 200 people that we've got to get to the airport and uh, 
uh, you know, luggage and all that. So we'll get out of, out of the Greenland parking lot about 545, 6 o'clock in the morning there on Monday and then go through all the screening process and get on the bird and head down there. <laughs> that is going to be so much fun. How much time, and you know, when I tell people this, I use your line all the time, which you told me many years ago, there is no such thing as a bad bowl game, is there? The worst ones I've ever been to are the be- are, are some of the best, you know. So it's a, it's an honor for these players and, and coaches and everybody associated with any team that goes to a bowl game because people don't realize how hard players work. Uh, this journey didn't just start in August. This started, you know, when you come back in January and the everything that a player has to go through from a physical standpoint – you know, some of them have battled through injuries throughout the course of the year. You know, so it's just a, a great reward, you know, for these guys to be able to uh, to go to a bowl game, and especially for your seniors that, you know, may be the last time they ever play football, been playing it since they're five years old, that, you know, they can go out the, the last time they ever play a game was in a bowl game. So really proud and happy for those guys. How do you balance work, practice, and fun in the Bahamas? Because I tell you, if I went was on your team, you'd send me home after the first day. <laughs> no, nah, we wouldn't send you home, Joe. You, you, you too, you too important to the team. So, no, you know the the thing about it, Joe, is we're we're not there that long. And I told them, you know, we have to get our work done here, and um, you know, I think it was probably a little bit more of a challenge here because we just finished final exams last week when we, when we finished the FAU game, you know, that next day, Sunday started the contact period from recruiting. So we were out recruiting, you know, I gave the players off a week and then we started practice last Saturday, uh, you know, in preparation for the game. So we've practiced this week, you know, around exam schedule and everything. So, We'll get there Monday. Time we get there Monday, you know, there's not enough time to practice. So they'll have Monday and then Tuesday, you know, is it will be a good work day. And then, you know, Wednesday is like a Thursday. Thursday's like a Friday and then Friday's game day. So you really you only have three practice opportunities when you're there. Uh, so like I said, we got to get our work done here. But it's a reward for them, Joe, like you said. And uh I want them to have fun, but they also understand that, you know, we're going down there to, to win a game and uh, it's not a vacation. Exactly right. And the fact that I love the fact that you guys are the first bowl game, which kicks off the bowl season. You guys started, it ends with the championship game on January the 10th, whenever that is. So that's also exciting because a lot of eyeballs are going to be on this game versus Toledo next week. Yeah, not not only are we the the first day of bowl games, you know, the the Cure Bowls later that day, but we're the very first one, you know, from a time slot standpoint. So, uh, you know, it's an opportunity for these guys to for a lot of people to see them and and uh, to kick off the the bowl season. And uh, you know what a, what a special time, you know. Uh, I I tell them when you're practicing in December. You know, that, that's a good thing. And uh, we're really excited about, you know, this opportunity. Coach, we, we had to bring on Justin Beasley. Uh, he thanks the world of you like I do. So, Justin, the floor is yours to ask Coach a question. Coach, you got some frequent flyer miles to get me and Joe to the Bahamas? We don't need freak. We got two empty seats ready for you. But, you know, sounds like you got to deal with this parade. You know, you got, you got Justin, mute your other microphone. Justin, turn your other camera off. He's still your son, isn't he, Joe? You still got to raise him. <laughs> I taught him better than this. Justin, are you there now? Justin, you muted the wrong microphone. This is ridiculous. Coach, you love Big Joe's Twitter. Tell us why it's the best one in the land. He's authentic, ain't he? Because he talks about you most of the time on there. <laughs> and the people want to hear about Justin Beasley, the people's choice. All right, Justin, you got another question to ask. Um, how, how much uh, do you enjoy being at Middle Tennessee? I think for 17 years now, you see the college landscape and all these coaches leaving for, for different jobs. How blessed are you to call Middle Tennessee home and have a good administration and, and also want to be there that long and, 
and be able to build relationships because I think that's why you got in this business in the first place. Yeah, Justin, I appreciate you saying that, but yeah, I'm honored to be here. Uh, you know, I never take a day for granted and, and you get in the coaching profession, you know, to try to impact and change lives. And, and coach Bowden used to always say, you know, that a coach can impact more people in a year than most people can in a lifetime. And uh, that's why I coach. That's why, you know, we coach. And I've never, you know, been that guy to chase the next job or chase the dollar bill or anything like that. And all I want to do is try to, you know, help these guys wherever I've been, whether it was Clemson or South Carolina or all my other stops, just to try to help these guys realize, you know, their full potential to be the best men, be the best football players that they can be. And, uh, you know, you, you start something, I, I feel like you should finish it. And, uh, you know, it's what I, I, I just, I love coaching. I'm passionate. I haven't, I haven't lost a bit of my passion, you know, for this game. And I just, I love trying to help, the, help these people, help these young players, you know, like I said, realize their full potential. I asked you one time uh, about – you had a player win the Super Bowl, and he said, that's great. And you said, almost without missing a beat, Coach, you get just excited when a player graduates as they do when they win a Super Bowl. And I just thought that was interesting that immediately you thought about graduation and players and getting out into the world and having that degree and how important it is. Yeah, Joe. And you know, Joe, I mean, eventually somebody's going to tell these guys you can't play football anymore. Some of them are going to be told – next Monday afternoon that you can never play football again. You know, you know, if you're fortunate enough to go to the NFL and the Super Bowls and all that, that's good. But eventually, you know, that ball is going to be taken away from you. And you got to rate, lean back on, you know, your, your foundation, your morals, your, your integrity, your character of who you are as a man. And, uh, you know, it starts with getting an education so you can provide for your family and be an example for your kids uh, as you get them, that they can look to, to mom, they can look at dad and say, my parents graduate from college. I want to do that. I want to be a, I want to provide, you know, for my family and don't let my circumstances determine, you know, my future. And we all control that. So I, I want these guys to graduate and they're doing that here. Go Justin. <laughs> I'm glad yours worked on me on with me justin because you're you didn't work when you had joe you figured it out i like your style thank you coach that's the way to do it hey just tell me uh you you got a place in the bahamas i mean you always go on all these tropical bowls i thought you gotta get a house out there by now you know the last time we went justin it was 15 then the next year we went to hawaii so maybe history history will repeat itself but you know, all your buddies in the coaching profession, you know, uh, they always call you about this time of the year and try to get on that plane too. But, you know, Conference like USA. Me and Joe. <laughs> Conference USA's got some great destination, you know, bowl sites, you know, with, you know, Hawaii, the Bahamas, New Orleans, you know, Fort Lauderdale, all the different bowl sites that we have, Dallas. So it's uh, Conference USA's got some great destinations and, and uh, we're excited to go down there. You know, I, I looked at the weather yesterday, you know, at six o'clock here yesterday morning, it was 35. And at six o'clock yesterday morning in the Bahamas, it was 75. <laughs> so uh, we're excited to get there. That, that's so great. Really feel uh, sorry for you, coach. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't have that parade, you could go with us. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to find a way to make both work. <laughs> there you go. Come on. Hey, and Justin, when you put him on the plane, you can put him in the – he's so tiny, Coach. You can put him in the stowaway. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Hide me in the luggage. <laughs> nah, we're going to put you in the front row. You know, the carry-on. Hey, I do want to ask you this, Coach. Uh, signing day is next week. You guys in the Bahamas, I mean, people are saying, this is confusing and just odd. Yeah, yeah you know, it's – it's a little scary to be honest with you, just because you're going out of the country. And I know the, the phone issues, technology issues that we had the last time we were there. So we've got to do a good job this week of educating our signees guys that we're going to sign on how to do what to do. And when we get down there, that's one of the first things we have to do is to make sure we've, you know, we've got a handle on that because 
you'd hate to have some kind of mishap happen because you're out of the country. So, you know, we've been to bowls when, you know, you had early signing day, but we've been in the States, you know, so uh, this is a little scary to be honest with you uh, just because, you know, the technology uh, issues that we could have, you know, we could get frozen down there in that little circle, you know, going around, you know, like Justin was earlier today. And, uh, you know, so it's a little scary, but yeah, you're right. You know, so you gotta, you gotta plan that also, you know, you got practice, you got preparation, you got signing day, you know, all the things that you have to do. It's a lot. Justin, you get one final question with coach. Uh, no, I just got one final statement, Coach. We love you. You know, me and Joe, we we have always loved you. And you talk about the players and graduating, and you talk about the family-like atmosphere. Uh, a lot of coaches can say that in front of a mic, but just working with you as often as me and Joe do, we can feel it from you, and we appreciate that. And you represent Middle Tennessee where Middle Middle Tennessee well, and especially Murfreesboro. And we're glad to have you. And uh, we hope we hope you never leave us. We we're, we're your prized joy. Uh, in Murfreesboro, for sure. Well, I appreciate you, Justin. And, and you know how I feel about you and the respect that I have for you and Joe. And you guys are first class in everything you do. And just a ton of respect for you. All right. See you, Justin. Coach, don't go anywhere. I got a couple more questions. Justin, get to work. Uh, Coach, what was your first bowl game as a player? Do you remember? Yeah. Uh, night, my uh, freshman year at Florida State, it was the Tangerine Bowl. Uh, which in Orlando, which then became the Citrus Bowl. And then when they added another bowl, it was the, you know, now they have a Tangerine Bowl. I think they do. But, uh, you know, so that was my first one against Texas Tech. Wow. And then um, the Orange Bowl, was it against Oklahoma? The, yeah, the next two were my Orange Bowl years, uh, and both of them were against Oklahoma. God, I just, and now, you know, it's still going. How many bowls total? Count as as a player. Yes, everything. Uh, Assistant coach, everything. Twenty four. This is this will be my twenty fourth. Twenty one is twenty one as a coach and three as a player. That is amazing. I remember it was the first one at middle the Motor City Bowl. Yeah, oh uh, six, uh, the the Motor City Bowl in Detroit on day after Christmas. I think it was. Wow, that's so great. And the fact that you know that you guys weren't just given a bowl game you guys earned this in the last game you were down big you rallied back uh i would think you're so proud of your team because they could just packed it in and said we tried and man they kicked it in another gear and just took over yeah you know and, and i told them joe after the game you know that was a that was a heck of a fight because of everything that we had to overcome and deal with the course of that week we had 14 players that didn't practice until Friday that week because they had flu. Three of them didn't even make the trip uh, because they were still, you know, had the flu. So, you know, just what they overcame and to, to get there and the fight that they had in that game and the never give up spirit and attitude. And I told them after the game that, you know, it, it's not what's poured on you. It's not what's said about you. It's not – you know, anything like that, it's that defines you. It's what's inside you, you know, and what was inside these, this team, what's inside this, these coaches, you know, is a great toughness, a great resiliency, you know, a, a never give up attitude. And, you know, a lot of people may have turned that TV off when it was 17 to three and, uh, but we didn't, you know, and, and, you know, what you don't, you know, what's poured on you, what's said about you doesn't define you. And uh, what, what you're made of is what you're in, what's inside of you. And I'm just really proud of the team and everything that they've gone through and overcome, and especially that game to get to where we wanted to get. Oh, fantastic. And uh, thank And just so great. What a great comeback and win. Also, before we go, uh, the APR rate, people don't really know what the APR is, but the academic rate at MTSU, uh, when you came there, you made it a priority, and you guys are at the top and have been for many years, and that is also important to you as well. Yeah, you know, it's like Justin said, an APR is glorified, I say it's glorified letters for graduation rate. You know, it's too hard to explain APR, but that's basically what it is. And, uh, you know, it's it, to me – it's what's important, you know, like I said earlier, 
you're going to be told you can't play football ever again, but you determine, you know, how long you want to work. And if you get your degree, you can work for a long, long time. That's and, right. uh, you know, so it's, uh, you know, it goes hand in hand. And, uh, you know, some guys, they realize it, you know, their freshman year, some of them that takes them to their sophomore, some, you know, don't ever get it, you know, but it's, it's, they'll, they'll never, they won't leave here, you know, and say that stock didn't care if I graduated or not. All he cared about was football. They'll never say that. And uh, I want these guys to be successful in every aspect of their life. And it starts with their, you know, college education. Beautiful coach as always. I know you're busy. Thank you so much. We'll be cheering you on. You know what I think about you and your family and uh, I love you, man. Thank you so much. Best of luck. Appreciate you, Joe. I love you. I respect you, man. And this is great. I love what you're doing, man. Uh, but you, you're the best. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Rick Stock, still head football coach at MTSU. They take on Toledo in the Bahamas Bowl. They leave on Monday. They play next Friday. So really cool to have Coach on today to join us for all that. I mean, again, I thank the world of him. We got the helmet. We got the jersey. You heard just, I mean, the sweatshirt. Justin was on earlier with us. So a lot of good things. All right, we'll come back. We will play America's favorite game, Celebrity Birthdays. That's next. It costs Tennessee more than $15 million to clean up roadside litter. It's time to keep your trash to yourself and our roadways clear because nobody trashes Tennessee. It was just a few drinks. I'm good. I thought it was good. After every game, we always have a few. It's no big deal. It was no big deal. Hey, I can hold my liquor. Thought I could hold my liquor. Is your roof in need of repairs? Maybe it's time for a full roof replacement. If so, choose Middle Tennessee's number one rated roofer. Tim Weeper Roofing has provided the Nashville area with outstanding residential and commercial services for nearly two decades. And with hundreds of five-star reviews, Tim Weeper Roofing has satisfied thousands of homeowners. To schedule a free and honest estimate, find us online at timweeperroofing.com. everybody all right let's get right to celebrity birthdays our man justin beasley is going to join us again he's got his cricket phone working and looking good today hey justin what's up this is uh t-mobile now i guess whatever it is (laughs) all right we're going to get to it america's favorite game it's celebrity birthdays uh with justin and the intern you guys are basically the same age so this should be a complete disaster Hey, I watched this two weeks ago just to see how awful your show was. And I say that tongue in cheek. We love each other, Joe. I know. Man, the intern was as bad as it was when I did this on the radio with you. Maybe worse. There's there's been times where I've nailed it, though. And I don't think I get enough credit for that part. Yeah, because you really don't know what's happening in the world. So that's really good. I really like, again, Jess, I like your Star Trek Federation jacket. It's really nice. Are you part of the Space Force? Yeah, something like that. (laughs) <laughs> All right, first up, Justin, you have to go first. You're the guest. How old is Chef Bobby Flay? Let's go 57. I'm going to go 54. 57, exactly. That's so Boom! Well done. 
Uh, actress Raven Simone from That's So Raven, a show that I know you two bozos watched growing up. Let's see. If I was 12 watching it, she was 18. I'm now 29, so add 17. She was probably, let's say you go 33, 34. Not, you can't, I need a one birthday, not 33. Give me one gay. 30, 30, 33 and a half. 33 is your answer. Ja, intern. Between 30 and 37. Uh, 38. She is 36. Intern ties it up. Well done. Had he gone 34, Justin, you'd have got that, but you didn't. Uh, drummer Walter Clyde Orange of the Commodores. How old is drummer Clyde Orange of the Commodores? Uh, if he's a drummer, he's old school. Let's go 70. I'm going to go 64. 75. Ooh. Got, got, we'll get there. Uh, actress Susan Day. She was in the uh, Partridge family in L.A. Law. Uh, 29. Uh, let's do 51. Close. 69. <laughs> Guys, man, so far <laughs> off. Uh, drummer Meg White of the White Stripes. Uh, let's go... 49. 58. 47. Yes. Justin, you got a two to one lead now. Well done. Don't get too comfortable. Yeah, well done. Uh, rapper uh, Kaneva of D12. I know him about as well as I know Master P, son. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, 40. I'm going to go 49. 46. All right. So, Justin, you're still ahead two to one. Let's go. Uh, country singer Johnny Rodriguez. Johnny Rodriguez. Uh, let's go 55. 48. He is 70. Ugh. Last one. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get after this. Uh, country singer Megan Lindsay. Country singer. I've never heard half these people. So, country singer Megan Lindsay. Let's go. 42. Come on, intern. This is it. I'm going to go 38. 36. Ah. You guys tie it up at two. All right. Here's a tiebreaker. Uh, actor, singer, Tiana Taylor. Never heard of her, but who cares? Let's go. Come on. Let's go 43. Sounds like a young name. I'm going to say 28. 31. Intern, you missed it by a year. Beasley, get to work. Love you, brother. Have a good weekend. I'm going to work on that internet connection. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for the jacket, bro. <laughs> Space <laughs> Force all the way, man. See you, brother. Uh, intern, you're so close, man. I know it. I know it. I'll get it next time. Hey, have a good weekend, brother. Stay safe. All right. See y'all. All right, everybody. Thanks for the show. Thanks, Rick Stock still. Thank you to Cindy Waller for National State. Uh, the intern will put all these segments out on YouTube later on. We'll blast them out. Go to the Facebook pages of the Main Street Media platform and see them all right there. Really great week. A lot of fun. Thank you. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll always leave you with this. Be nice to everybody. Open doors for people. Smile. Let people in traffic. Wave at people. Nobody cares about your CrossFit workout unless you're doing something for charity. Then we care. And we always leave you with this. Remember this, my friends. Nobody ever went broke by giving. We'll see you soon.